Pitch number one, day three. Maybe it's the rebel in me, but ever since I learned that most VCs have stopped investing in direct-to-consumer, I've become super into it. When I first spoke with Luke Barkley Young, today's founder, I felt like his D2C startup had that spark of innovation I've been looking for. And that spark was a subscription for a recyclable shower curtain. The product touches on some big trends, circularity, subscription, sustainability. It seemed like it could be huge. But then again, it's a shower curtain. Luke does have some early traction though. Will the investors shower him with cash? Or is that just pouring money down the drain? I'm Josh Muccio, welcome to The Pitch, where real entrepreneurs pitch to real investors for real money. Hey everyone, I'm Beck Bamberger, managing partner of Bad Ideas Group. Hi, I'm Al Bashera, the managing partner at Interlock Capital. Hi, I'm Jillian Manis, managing partner of Structure Capital. I'm Howie Diamond, managing partner of Pure Ventures. The pitch for Outlines is coming up after this. Yeah. yeah. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hey, I'm back. Nice, nice to meet you. Hi. Hey, how are you? Hi. I'll give you a pound. Nice Hi. to meet you. Hi. Hi. Lovely to meet you. All right. Um, well, good morning. Hi. My name is Luke, and I am the co-founder and CEO of Outlines. So at Outlines, we are pioneering a new circular subscription where we take responsibility for recycling the products that we put into the world. We're starting with the dirtiest products in your home, home essentials. Outline started with a personal pain point. Every apartment I had in New York City required a plastic shower liner. Mm. It was slimy, it was moldy, it was disgusting. And when I went to replace it and put it in my curbside bin, I found out that in New York, they don't actually recycle flexible plastics. And many people know that recyclables in America, of everything we put into our recycling bins, only around 6% of them mm -hmm. are actually recycled. So Outlines, we're doing things very differently. We take responsibility for the products that we make. The process for users is super frictionless. With all of our products, when they get a replenishment, it comes with a prepaid mailer to send back the old one, and we do all of the recycling. Since we launched our first product, in January last year, we sold over 5,000 units of the shower liner. But what we're really, really excited about is our subscription rate. 75% of our users subscribe to recurring deliveries at the point of purchase. That's five times an industry standard. We're building a category-defining brand, and we're setting a new standard for how consumer businesses should operate. We're now raising a million dollars to launch five new products this year to grow our systems and plans with our existing users, but to also acquire new users. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Luke. Thanks. When you say launch five products, take mm -hmm. us through what that is. Yeah, and, sure. And, and, and even go one step further back, yes. like why, which, why are you picking the products that you're picking yeah. specifically? Yeah, yeah, so we call them, we say they're the products you need but never loved. They're all these consumer durables that are just all around our home. So they're things like shower liners, dish scrubbers, toilet brushes. And just by the sheer nature of the job they do, they require replacing. But when we do replace them, they contribute to the growing plastic waste crisis. When we design these products, the first thing we start with is like a life cycle analysis. Is it, you know, petroleum-based materials? Mm -hmm. How far are we shipping it? How heavy is it? How light is it? And also, like, what are the possible environmental downfalls of that? Okay, so, so you design it. Now, who so manufactures it? it? We have a manufacturing partner in China right now. Mm, okay. And then uh, we're shipping to the U.S. And then we sold direct to consumer right now. Users use them. It comes back to us. We consolidate it. And once we have enough of them, we send them to our recycle partner. What's so, the cost of recycling? So right now we're paying roughly a dollar per item to have it recycled. However, once we get to a quantity of shipments of 10,000 pounds and above, we'll probably start to get paid enough for that material that will offset just shipping it to the recycler. And then once we're really shifting at scale, we can start charging for the material. And for example, like a lot of our shower liners are made into things like shoe soles or um, gym equipment or other plastic durables. 
this is a big trend right now, but will people pay a premium for these products because they're helping the environment and you know, this is- Or maybe it's a discount. Um, so our, first of all, our products are made of two parts, a part you keep and a part you replenish. Right. So the top third is an organic cotton because that part doesn't actually get dirty. You're just changing the bottom two thirds. Our initial set is a price, including shipping is $55. The part that you're replenishing for the shower curtain is $25. That is how much our customers care about sustainability and health and wellness. That is a very high price point. Yes, you're right. We're never going to win on price. That's not our USP. Our products are non-toxic. They're much more premium. One of the things we found with our customers is that they actually hated hanging the shower liner like on the hoops. So ours is magnetized. It's actually a really nice experience taking Mm. it off and back on. It's a bit like when you close your AirPod case, you know, nice, soft. Um, So just making that experience, like I said, much more frictionless for our users. How many, how many customers do you have right now? Or right now we have three and a half thousand subscribers and we've sold 5,000 units. How many of those have been recycled? So it's an ongoing process, yes. which we track. Yes. So our trailing um, full participation in responsible replenishment, we call that is 88%. Part of our brand promise is that we never want to oversell you something. Mm-hmm. So when you actually buy from us, you go through a configurator on our site and it establishes a recommended subscription rate. So whether you should get your shower liner every three, six or mm-hmm. nine months. Mm-hmm. And ongoingly, we'll be designing our products. They fit into these quarterly increments. Mm-hmm. Essentially, imagine a time where you get an outlines box every quarter and it has everything you need in it to, to refresh and replenish your home. So and then you send back the other Yeah, stuff. so some things you might get like in a pack of three, like sponges or whatever mm-hmm. that might be. And that's just kind of how we see that growing. So I want to nitpick a little bit on your selection of your first product here. And Mm -hmm. we have one of the plastic ones in a shower. We don't use that often, and I don't think we've ever replaced it. But in the shower, we do use frequently. We have cloth on the outside and cloth on the inside, and we just wash the thing. Yeah. And so, you know, you're a sustainability company that's trying to, in my view and looking at this, it feels like you're reinforcing bad habits as opposed to, hey, why don't we just provide a cloth one that is washable and, and easy. So how do you how do you handle that? Like, yeah, but I use a cloth one. Why would I why would I go back to plastic? Yeah. So the material you're talking about it isn't it's not cloth. It's a it's a polyester. It's covered in what's called a DWR, durable water resistant, which is made of a PFA, which is a highly carcinogenic forever chemical. And when you stand next to it in the shower, the hot water encourages those PFAs to go into your bathroom air and you breathe them in. So you're telling you, me I'm going to get when cancer? You, <laughs> but when, but also when you, possible, but when you, Don't breathe while you're taking a shower. Yeah, but when you basically. also wash that product, it releases microplastics into the uh, washing machine that municipal water plants simply cannot get out. And that polyester shower liner will live in landfill just as long as a plastic shower liner. Mm. Before we launched the business, we did a ton of research and we found a lot of negative customer sentiment towards those fabric ones. So there is a significant market of people who do prefer like the actual plastic And that's the problem we're addressing right now. How are you approaching this D2C marketing, given that it's not the most favorable environment to be D2C? I started in D2C in like 2013 when it was like the golden era of D2C. And I'm still quite bullish on D2C, I've got to say, because I think if you're a good marketer and you get that diversification of marketing channels Mm -hmm. right, for a subscription-based business, you can build really good business in D2C. We have a very competitive CAC. In fact, post the um, iOS update, our CAC actually reduced and it's continued to stay stable this year. So we're still first purchase profitable. You know, I strongly believe in like in these early days, building that initial strategic asset of subscribers direct to consumer is the best approach for us. How are you acquiring customers? Well, we do the typical things through paid social because you do have a lot of like what are kind of cool curious customers who are searching for like better for the environment shower liner or Mm -hmm. non-toxic shower liner. If we can intercept that user journey away from Target or Bed Bath & Beyond, we can actually, I think our CAC on paid search right now is under $17, which is great. And like it's showing the strength of our digital. Um, And then the other thing is customers really care about um, recommendations and endorsements. So they're looking at like the top 10 shower liners, the top 10 this. So we're the number one shower liner across like strategist or wire cutter. Um, and then leveraging affiliate off of that. I I love your mission and I love that the sustainability angle and a lot of companies are talking about this. I actually think you have a viable solution when it comes to recycling these products. And I think there is a demographic of people that this you're tugging at their 
identity and their heartstrings. And, and that's why, you know, I think you have these initial early adopters. I don't see the mainstream adoption for this product because the price is way too high and way too premium for me to, to get involved in this because I just think it's going to be a very, very small select people who care about the environmental impacts to get over that initial price point. So for, for me, it's not going to work right now, but I'd love to see how it evolves in the future. So I'm a big fan of you. You've built a lot here, right? You've done a lot already in just you know a little over a year. Um, and I love your mission. And I love what you care about and all those things. Um, but I think what what it all boils down to for me is I'm having a hard time drawing the lines that get me from where you are today to a big, massive company in the future. I need to understand what's going to happen in the middle to get you there. And that's the part that I have a lot of doubts on right now. Um, and so because of that, I'm, I'm out, but I would definitely love to follow along in the journey. Can I back up and ask, why are you doing this? So I came from a background of consumer goods products and I supplied into Target and Best Buy and all these big retailers. And, you know, I believed in the businesses I was working for, but if you ever see the physical amount of product it takes to stock a Target, you'd be surprised. Every plastic thing you've ever used, they live for like 450 years. And it's a myth that they're being recycled. And I remember growing this venture back business with, you know, with the founding team and just looking at that and just really feeling it, just being like, this is, this is scary. Like, where's all this stuff gonna go? Long term, is this a product company or is this a, similar to let's say Allbirds, a technology materials company? Um, I believe at the heart of our business, we are a replenishment business. Imagine like all the stuff in your house that requires replacing, whether it's that annoying filter in your fridge freezer machine or the filters in your HAVVAC system or like in automobile, there's this ton of stuff. And then when you do replace these things, they're big, putting them in the trash. I mean, for me, and I imagine a lot of other people feel somewhat guilty or guilt ridden. You feel bad. So I wonder, and what we're looking at is like, yes, Outlines is kind of carving out its wedge in Home Essentials, but what we're really excited about is beginning to introduce third party product because we do such a good job of shipping to and taking back and recycling. And we know that our customers love subscribing from us. So I think Outlines should be like the destination for replenishable. It's a bit like the way Whole Foods was the destination for believable organic produce. I think that this is overly complicated. So you are designing, you're manufacturing, you're recovering, you're replenishing, you're recycling. It's a lot. Mm -hmm. And I would love to see you focus on one thing or even build almost a SaaS product that's logistics for replenishment. I would sit the team down and reset a bit. I know it's a big pivot, but you're at the beginning. Your mission is incredible, but your vision is off. So a, I'm out. Yeah. I mean, have you looked into why Target, Walmart, you know, Best Buy, whatever, haven't had an offering where come return your products into our recycling bin when you're ready for a new one? So do you think about that a lot? And we, you know, we've had preliminary conversations with Target. And the, the biggest problem we see is the current items they're buying. So I, would, I mean, not to obsess about shower liners, but just to give this one example, if a shower liner has metal rings at the top or metal weights in the bottom, they the minute you, you can't recycle. Right. That's why we design, because we know that we can design for recycling and also for shipping. Luke, I'm in. And here is why. I can help on the PR. So you need a lot of PR. This is my specialty. This is what my agency did. And we're playing a consumer game. It's going to be PR. You're going to go in with a shower curtain. We're going to go in with toilet brushes. But long term, if you can change the consumer into going, oh, there's just a company that takes care and takes that stuff away, you need to lower the burden extremely in recycling. And if you can crack that, then the momentum happens, then the swell happens, and now the Amazons and Targets go, oh, let's, let, let's just buy that. Let's just buy that. And then you're out. So how much are you in for? Oh, I'm in for 50K. Nice. There we you go. You don't even know what his terms are. Yeah. I don't, you but don't we care. will discuss. Yeah, six million cap. Sounds good. Okay. 
Back then. Yeah. Thank nice. you. Thank you, Luke. Thanks Thank you, Luke. Right. Cheers. Good luck. Becky, you have a big job on your hand. Yes. Oh, trust you me. You got to change but Beck consumers. Becky's seeing this as a PR. Oh, yeah. yeah. A, oh, no, there's a that's huge why you're looking yeah. at. So that's yeah, why I was looking at when he's like, oh, we've been on listicles. I'm like, no, 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 F listicles. I'm sorry. We're going to turbocharge the press and the consumer awareness. But I can <laughs> see it. So I'm like, I'm down. It's a big hill to and climb. But it's Beck a big hill to Beck climb. Beck can climb it. Hi, Beck. Hi, Josh. So how does this become a big business? It's a shift in the consumer recognizing, oh, I'm going to buy products that are replenished and good for the planet but i see it as a, an incredible story a moment of a consumer change and i love those moments when you're on the pre that hence bad ideas it sounds like a bad idea to be yeah. like oh i'm just going to replenish everything i'm just going to sit home i don't have to go to the store things will just be replenished for me there's something there that i feel compelled enough i'm so just impressed that he's gotten this far with a shower curtain in yeah. a year Josh, There's to me, that was another compelling there. piece. I'm like, yeah. really? You know with what? The shower it's curtain? the Chia Pet. This it, is yeah. perfect for bad ideas, like a shower curtain. <laughs> yeah. You already sold how many? Let's like, I think cheers he's tapped that. into something in consumer psychology that I just haven't really seen in a company before. Yeah. I mean, it sounds yeah. ridiculous to subscribe to a shower curtain, but he's doing well, it like know, he's got 75% of people on first purchase subscribing know, to five, a shower that's 5, curtain. It's like, people. I can go, I could launch mm. something tomorrow and get 5,000 yeah. yeah, users. We, yeah. yeah. Oh, do oh, it. Yeah. Do it. Okay. I, no, could no, launch, do I could launch a no, no, curl no, cream because I have yeah. curly hair. I could launch Jesus. a. I dare you. I don't believe <laughs> right. it. I want to see it, Howie. Wait, Jill and I will do it tomorrow. We'll have 5,000 users in a But he did it with a shower curtain. We got work to do. I'm ready for it. All right. You guys are good. Luke got a $50,000 commitment from Beck Bamberger, despite the hot take that he should just pivot to B2B SaaS. But not everyone thinks that's such a great idea. That is the absolute worst idea I've ever heard in my life. No. <laughs> Hear the B2B rebuttal on episode 123 of the Pitch Podcast. Link in the description. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that bell. I'll see you next week on The Pitch Show.